What's going on, everybody, and welcome on into the channel. Today, we are talking Robinhood options, how to buy and sell options on the Robinhood platform. We're going to be walking you through step by step here in this video. I want to start off first going over some of the basics, but then I really want to make sure we focus in on the platform, how it works, and an updated kind of tutorial guide on how this stuff works. Because as time goes on, these platforms all change, they adapt, and we need to make sure that we know what we're doing. Because the last thing you want to do is have an understanding for options, then come on to a new platform, come on to Robinhood, go on to a different brokerage platform, whatever, and not know what you're doing, and then end up losing money because you entered something in wrong, or, or this or that. So first off, there is a video that I covered on my personal channel that went over options for beginners, okay? So if you guys want to learn more about the basics and the background to options in general, not specific to Robinhood's platform, just overall, what are some concepts you need to understand? That would be a good place to go. I will link that video in the description box down below. So check that out either before or after this video, but I do wanna cover some of the basics and then we'll dive into Robinhood, okay? So let's just do that really quick. So in terms of options, we're talking about calls and puts. Now calls, if you buy a call, you're generally betting on the stock to go up. If you buy a put, you're betting on the stock to go down. Pretty much simple terms, that's what you need to know. Now, options we trade as contracts. So when you buy a stock, you're buying shares. Now in option terms, you're buying a contract. And one contract is the right to buy or sell 100 shares at the strike price by the expiration date, which I wanna make sure we touch on the expiration date and the strike price here in this video. So both the strike and the expiration are really going to help identify the contract, right? Because we can be talking about, let's say, Apple or Amazon, whatever stock you, you want to pick, Ford. We're going to probably use Ford in this example because Ford's been an interesting stock as of late. But if you were to go tell a friend what you're going to go buy, you could just go say, I'm going to go buy Apple stock. And everyone pretty much has an understanding if you know stocks, at least the basic terms of stocks, you know, okay, they're going to go buy shares of Apple, whether it's one share, whether it's now fractional shares, because many brokerage platforms, you can buy fractional shares. But in options terminology, what you need to understand is the strike price and the expiration date actually are really important. So if you wanted to go out and buy an option contract, you'd want to tell somebody, hey, I'm going to buy the Apple 190 strike price expiring out into December of 2024. You need those identifiers to help understand what the contract is. Now that expiration date and the strike price are also important when it comes to the value of the option. Obviously we'll talk about in the money versus out of the money and that's a very interesting terminology. We'll talk about that next, but the expiration date is crucial because if a stock is out of the money, OTM as we say, then it's gonna have zero value by the expiration date, right? So we have to understand that the option contract will have zero value if the stock is out of the money and that will depend on the strike price and the expiration date, okay? So in the money for calls, the stock price is above the strike. For puts, in the money means the stock price is below the strike price, and then out of the money is the opposite. So for calls, the strike price is above the stock price, and for puts, that strike price is below the stock price. Now, a couple last things I do want to touch on before we dive into the platform here on Robinhood. Intrinsic value is essentially how much a stock is in the money, okay? We'll cover that in depth, and we'll show you kind of numbers and how that works. Extrinsic value is essentially going to be the factors like the time, volatility, other variables that play into pricing out an option. Now, when it comes to how much you're going to pay out of pocket, okay, Robinhood does a really good job in terms of showing you and making it very easy to see, but you need to understand you take the option premium, so whatever you're going to be paying for the option, whatever the price is for that option contract, multiply that by the number of contracts you're going to buy. So if it's one, then you take the premium times one, and then multiply that by 100. That is your out of account or out of pocket cost, okay, for the option contract. So let's say the premium was $1. You want to buy two contracts. That means you take $1 times it by two. You now have $2. You multiply that by 100. It means it's going to cost you $200 out of your account or out of your pocket to pay or to buy that option. All right, so now for the good stuff. So right now we are on the Robinhood platform. And what I'm gonna do is you can go and search any stock. I've just typed in F because Ford has been a interesting stock. Take a look at Ford. Over the past year, it's up 192%. Wild stuff on Ford. And Ford's been a interesting stock. So I figure we use this as our example and we can kind of mess around with some options and learn how to use options, how to trade options on Robinhood with Ford as our example. So 
I pull up the stock page right here. It's gonna be very, very similar to the mobile app. We're using the web version. So it's the same exact thing, just kind of on your phone, right? And that's what I think is really good about Robinhood compared to other brokerage platforms. Many of these platforms have like very different setups when it comes to your phone, your mobile app versus like the desktop platform or the web platform. Robinhood does a good job of keeping it all pretty simple. So obviously I can go ahead and I can buy shares right here, but I don't wanna do that, I wanna play options here. So I go down to trade F options, okay? Forward F is the ticker symbol for forward. Now we're talking, now we're into some juicy stuff here. Let's zoom in a little bit more and let's talk about it. Okay, so I can pull up the price history, I can pull up the uh, the chart for forward. So it was red down today, and uh, then it actually pushed up and now it's green today by a couple percent, which is pretty impressive uh, and how forward has been kind of handling itself the past uh, couple of days, really, it's really strong. So. Now, if we wanna dive into this stock, right? What I wanna do here is I want to talk about some options, okay? I wanna start with just looking at calls. Then we'll jump to puts, then we'll talk about selling, and then we'll talk about multi-legs, okay? So briefly, we're gonna be looking at calls here, and I briefly wanna to touch on some more information that you have at your fingertips when using the Robinhood platform, okay? So if I was to click on any of these different selections, right, we see the strike prices over here, our break-even price, we'll explain what that means. Per, uh, to percentage to break even, percent change for today, how much these options are up or down today. You have the change in uh, premium kind of dollar value in terms of how much that premium is up today. And the right-hand side is the price of the option premium or that contract that we're looking at, okay? And each of these contracts are essentially labeled by the strike price. That's kind of the identifier on the left-hand side. And then up here, this dropdown is the expiration. So this is key because this is gonna tell us when these expire. And so changing that, will have an effect on changing the premium price, the value of these options, because the farther you go, the more time, the more volatility, the more other factors, the more extrinsic value these options will have because we have a lot of time. There could be some volatile movements up or down, and so these options are gonna price in some of that movement. So for us to make money, we have to essentially either beat that movement, make a bigger move than what the option's pricing in, or Get that move in a very short period of time and those options are going to move very very fast in a short period of time so that's what it's all about when it comes to options now if i click on one of these option contracts for example the 25 dollar calls if i click on this right here i have more information so we have the bid the ask just like a stock so you go and buy a stock you have the bid the ask very very straightforward stuff if you guys want to learn more there are videos going over order types. We cover that on the WeWill platform, but it's pretty straightforward. We cover what they all mean. So that's also a useful video here on this channel. There's also the Greeks, okay? We actually have a playlist that covers the Greeks, and we even covered that in this video. We actually have a section on the Greeks. So if you guys want to go back to that video in the description box below, check it out, or go to our Greeks playlist, and you'll learn more about what these Greeks are in short video form. So you guys can kind of see how it works and how this stuff makes sense all in front of you. The next things I want to make sure you understand are the volume, okay? If there's no volume, okay, on these contracts, then it's not something you want to probably mess with, okay? Now, in this case, these contracts are going for about 41 cents. So that means per contract, it's going to cost you about $41 as of right now. So if you wanted to go ahead and buy 10 contracts, there's already been 65,000 contracts traded today, you're fine. If you saw this volume and the volume was 100 and you wanted to go buy 100 contracts, well, now you're talking about a pretty low volume uh, option that you're that really isn't trading that much, and you want to go and buy pretty much everything that we had traded today. The problem behind that is if you wanted to go sell, are you going to find enough buyers to match your sales? That's one of the problems when it comes to options. So you have to make sure you understand that. If you don't, then that could get you caught up into a mess by playing some random tickers, you're playing some random penny stocks that have very, very low volume, if not and if no volume potentially at all, and you can get caught up in buying a lot and then come time to sell, you might not be able to. Okay, so you got that under control. Now let's understand calls, buying calls. Okay, so let's say I wanna go buy a call. On the top, make sure I have buy and call select. That means I think the stock is going to go up, okay? Now, this expiration date, I'm gonna use this one that expires in like two days from when I'm filming this video, just for this example. But if I was to increase the, the time until the expiration, so for example, look at the $25 calls right here. They're trading for 41 cents. If I was to give myself an additional week, go out to next week, these $25 calls, find them right here, are trading for 71 cents. And if I went out to February, give myself about a month, these are 150, 149. So you see that adding a lot more time is going to increase that price of the option. So make sure you understand that. And it's actually really important when it comes to potentially selling 
options. And we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. So I'm going to use, let's go to February 4th. Let's go to, or actually let's go to the January 28th. Let's go to the end of the month pretty much. And let's use these. Okay. Cause it's January when I film this video and I figure let's go to the end of the month and let's use this as an example. So if I want to buy a call, okay, we have the share price right in the middle of our screen. So it tells us right now that, Hey, we have forward trading at 2462 and I'm looking at these $25 calls out to expire in the end of the month. Now, this is an out of the money contract, okay? So we talked about before, okay? When looking at calls, if the stock price, the share price is below the strike price that you're looking at, well, you're out of the money, okay? That means that if the stock never gets over 25 by the expiration date, this contract is going to expire worthless because the stock never got above. Now, if it does get above and you technically are going to have an option that's going to have value, that option could expire with value. And what's going to happen is that option can get executed. Now, Robin will probably do a good job and they're most likely going to tell you or get you out of a trade before it expires and before you have to take on those shares. Because if this expired in the money, and you wanted to execute this option, you would then be buying 100 shares at $25 per share. And in order to have done that, you paid a premium to have the right to do that, but not the obligation, okay? Most people, most option traders are going to trade the premium values and that's it. They're getting in, they're getting out. They're not looking to hold these things through. And if they do hold to the expiration date, they're probably going to be holding worthless options as a lottery play or something along those lines. Okay. Cause if you wanted to go out and say, Hey, I'm going to go buy these $27 calls on Robinhood and pay 45 bucks a contract. Let me go buy two contracts. I pay like 90 bucks and say, you know what? If this ends up expiring worthless, I'll, I'm fine tossing away 90 bucks. But if not, if this goes up hundred percent, 200%, I'm going to take my profits and I'm going to lock in the gains. So some traders will like to go that route. Now I have buy call selected. If I was to go ahead and click on the premium right here, the $1 premium, I will now see long call at the top of my entry price, my order entry right here. And I can see, okay, $25 strike price calls expiring 128. I'm buying it. And right now they're going for 101 total cost out of my pocket will now be 100 bucks. And then what's really cool is they have a little chart down here. So it tells you your max loss, your max loss on an option trade is what you pay for it. If you're simply buying a call or buying a put, your max loss is what you pay. That's what's really important. Okay. So if you were to put your entire account into these calls, technically you could lose the entire investment, you know, size or your entire position size. If, if the, the trade or the stock goes against which way you need it to go for you to make money. So in this case, if all of a sudden Ford tanks, well, guess what? I'm probably going to lose a large chunk of my investment unless I sell it ahead of time or I sell it before it becomes worthless. Right? So now it has this break even price rate, which is actually really cool. Okay. So when I explain this really quick, the break even price, when it comes to calls, is going to be the price that Ford stock, the share price that Ford needs to get to in order for you to break even. If I was to buy these right now, I click on continue. I go ahead and I buy right now. Okay. This break even price is the price that Ford must be by the expiration date for my option to be worth what I paid for it. Okay. That's what it means. Now, if Ford goes to $26 tomorrow, this option will still have a couple weeks until it expires. You can bet that I'm going to be making money on this. My option will be worth a lot more. This break even is based off intrinsic value. Okay. So if I'm paying $1 for this option contract, my intrinsic value, okay, needs to be $1 by the expiration for me to break even. And how do we calculate intrinsic value? Well, if we're in the, we got to calculate in the money. So that means our stock or our share price needs to be $1 in the money. Okay. And how do you calculate that? Well, our strike price is 25. So $1 away or $1 beyond that North of that above 25. When we're talking calls, it's the opposite for puts it's below, but for calls $1 above 25 is 26. So we need 26 by the expiration date for us to break even for this contract to essentially be worth what I'm paying for it. Now, if we move that way, way before the expiration date, we may have $1 of intrinsic value. Let's say we have $1 of intrinsic value next week. You take that $1 of intrinsic value and then you add the extrinsic value. So how much time there is, volatility on Ford, 
and things like that, which could help inflate that premium or the option contract. So now you may be looking at Ford and it's 26 next week. These contracts may be trading for $1.50. You just made 50% if you take your profits here. And so that's where many traders will like to take profits and, and lock in gains. And that's how a lot of option traders like to trade. They're looking for movement on their premiums like that. And they're not looking to hold this thing the entire way or even let this thing expire. They're looking to kind of get in, get out. And that's it. Either it hits a stop loss. Okay. They hit their, they hit their level where, hey, you know what? If this premium goes under 80 cents, I'm out. I'm going to risk myself 20 cents on the premium. And I'm looking to make 50 cents or more. And that's my risk reward. And that's it. So that's how that goes. Now, if I was to go and buy in the money contracts right now, like if I wanted to buy them right now, so I'd look for, for option price or our strike price of these contracts that are below the current share price. Let's say I went down, I bought the 24s. They're obviously gonna be much more expensive because we currently have 60 cents of intrinsic value, but you can see these premiums are going for 150. So they're pricing in about 90 more cents of extrinsic value, okay? So that's when it comes down to calculating intrinsic versus extrinsic. All you need to know, if you're out of the money, where on the call side, if the stock price is below the strike price, okay, then you currently have no intrinsic value. If the stock price is now above your strike price, you take the difference between the stock price, the share price, you subtract the actual strike price of the option, that difference is gonna be your intrinsic value then you go ahead and look at your contracts and how much they're going for. Then that difference is the extrinsic value. So then you would take your contract, you find your intrinsic. Okay, let's say on the intrinsic on these is right now looking at like 10 cents. Okay, so our extrinsic value right now on the 2450s is over $1. Now that's kind of how we can back our way into that. Okay, so now when it comes to actually entering this in, let's go through that. So we have 100 share or 100 shares is, is the right or the right to buy 100 shares at the strike price is what we're essentially doing. Now we go ahead with one. If I want to change that, I can change that. I add my limit price right here. So we're going to give you kind of the bid and the ask, which we were looking at before. If I go back here, our bid is at 102. Our ask is at 105. So I can put myself closer to the ask and I get filled right away or I can put myself closer to the bid and it might take a little bit of movement. And if we get a dip in the stock, boom, I'll get filled and that's it. Now, good for day versus good till canceled. Let's just go over that really quick. So good for day means, hey, by the end of the day today, okay, market closes today at 4 p.m. Eastern. If we have not filled our order, it's going to cancel it. If I put good till canceled, if our order has not filled, it actually will get 90 additional days in order to fill. Uh, before they cancel it, okay? Just know that. So if I, if I put a limit price in for these, let's say I want these options, but I, I don't want to pay more than a dollar, and I go ahead and I add in, I put a one, right? But right now, uh, our bid and ask are above that, So and, and, and let's say four goes higher. It may never come down to this level. I may never get filled, right? Or I might want to get filled tomorrow, and I could potentially kind of let this thing go and, and add an order that is a good till canceled, and until I cancel it or until 90 days passes, it'll leave this order, and if it ever hits that limit price, I'll get filled. Okay, so that's calls. Let's go back and do a quick example for puts. So if I wanna get rid of this, I'm gonna click on these right here, get rid of that guy. And now I'm gonna go ahead and buy a put. Now buying a put means I'm expecting or I'm betting on the stock to go down, okay? So same deal here. Now, if we're looking at puts, we are talking about contracts that are in the money that are more expensive, that are above, strike price above our current stock price or, or current share price. Now, if our, we're looking at contracts that are below, price points below the share price, these are out of the money and these are gonna be cheaper, okay? So it's the exact opposite of calls when we're looking at puts, okay? Make sure before you go ahead and do this, you're looking at buy puts, buy calls, okay? Buying a call, think the stock's gonna go up, buying a put, think it's gonna go down. Now, you may still get a move in your direction, but you may end up losing money and that's because of, in the money versus out of the money, intrinsic and extrinsic value. So let's say that I was looking at these 24s on uh, on Ford, right? And let's say Ford drops down over the next like couple of weeks because we have a couple of weeks till this expires. Let's say that every day Ford drops two, three cents, right? And by the expiration date, Ford is sitting at $24.10. Well, yeah, the stock went down, but these contracts, guys, are gonna be worthless by the expiration date because, because I'm paying... 89 cents right now for them. And I need Ford to actually go to my break even price, which is actually 2311. I need it to get to that point by the expiration date for this contract to be worth what I paid for it. But I also need it to be under the stock price has to be under 24 by the expiration for this contract to have any value at all. 
So if we're above 24 and we're getting closer and closer to the expiration date, you guys can probably see just how easy it is to lose a lot of money on options. So that's why in the money could be seen as a safer bet. It's more expensive, okay? A little bit more of a difficult barrier to entry for most traders for someone who's brand new with a small account. Yes, out of the money contracts are cheaper. They have a higher potential in terms of percentage gains if you get a move in a short period of time but they can also expire worthless. And so there's the risk reward. You have to understand it and always weigh that when looking at your options. Okay. So let's say I was looking at the 25s, which are actually in the money. So I want to click on these. They're going to be 120, 142, which means I'm going to have to pay 142 bucks per contract that I want to buy. Okay. And let's look at this. Here's a little chart. So if we look back to the left, okay, the lower Ford goes, the more we make. And the worst case scenario is that Ford hits our max loss, meaning the contract expires worthless by the expiration date and we lose all of what we pay for it. And that's it. Then it gives our break even price, what Ford needs to be by the expiration for us to have at least the same value of these contracts and what we paid for them. And that's pretty much it. Here's our chart. Gives you a max profit, uh, essentially assuming that Ford goes to zero, which is technically possible, I guess, in terms of stocks. Um, so your max profit on a, on a call on the call side is actually unlimited, whereas your max profit on the put side is somewhat capped uh, if the stock was to essentially go to zero, which is fairly unlikely in the next couple of weeks for Ford. But you know, again, just they're putting it there to make it easy to visualize and all that stuff, which is cool. So. That same thing when it comes to limit price, uh, contracts, enter that in, good till day, whatever. I click on review order, and then if I'm good to go, I will submit it, and then I'm good to go, and then I, I'm, I'm in. And again, this is a long put. Now, let's talk about selling options. Now, you may have to have different levels of option experience on your account, so you'll need to go into your account, and you'll need to go in and actually either reach out to Robinhood if you don't have enough levels or you have the option experience to do uh, more advanced techniques, but the next technique is going to be selling options, okay? And so we could sell calls. And what does that mean? We're going to get paid what the premium is right now. So if I was to sell the $25 call right now on Ford, I go right here. See what it says? Now it says short call, okay? See how it says total credit? That means I'm going to get paid $0.99 cents or $99, right, per contract. I'm getting paid $99 bucks right now if I sell this contract. Now, how do I do that? Well, if you want to sell calls, most likely you're going to need to have 100 shares of the actual underlying stock to sell a call, which is now a covered call. You probably heard the term covered calls. If you haven't, well, now you have. So a covered call is essentially what you're doing here is you are you own 100 shares and you're saying, hey, if Ford expires or goes over 25 bucks and expires over 25 by the expiration date, I'm going to sell my 100 shares Per, per contract that I'm selling, right? I'm going to sell my my shares, 100 shares at 25 bucks. Now, I'm going to also get paid, what we're, what we're looking at right here, I'm gonna get paid a credit, what I sell this option for right now, in addition to that. So, if Ford never gets over 25, or, never ex, or doesn't expire over 25 by the expiration date, I'm gonna keep my shares, and I'm gonna keep what I sold this option for. You see what I mean here, guys? So if Ford never goes over 25 and it never, doesn't finish over that level by the expiration, what I sell my covered call, what I, whatever I sell a call for, I keep no matter what. And let's say Ford goes over 25, okay? And Ford goes to 26. Well, what happens? I essentially told myself or I told my brokerage platform, I told Robinhood, hey, if we expire over 25, sell my shares at 25. I'm fine with that. But... In case we do go way higher, I want to at least make sure I don't lose or miss out on more money, more gains had I just held my shares. So I want you to pay me or I want someone to pay me for this contract. And that's what you can do. Okay. So I'm going to get paid 97 bucks to essentially put a limit sell at 25 by the expiration date. And it's something that a lot of people like to do in terms of like almost paying yourself a dividend on a stock that may not have a dividend or has a small dividend. So what you can do is if you own 100 shares of a stock, let's say I go to this week's, right? And I say to myself, I don't think Ford's going to expire over 26 bucks this week. I think it's very unlikely. Well, guess what I can do? It's Wednesday right now. So I have, you know, two more days. I can go ahead and sell these calls right here because I have, let's say, 100 shares of Ford. 
and get paid 14 bucks. Now it might not sound like a lot, but that's a sandwich, that's lunch, right? And so you can get paid 14 bucks and if Ford only goes, and let's say Ford goes to 25, 20, 25, 50. Well, it never went over 26 and it doesn't expire over 26, doesn't finish the week over 26 by the expiration date. I keep my 14 bucks as I sold those calls and that's it, they expire worthless. Well, whoever bought them, that sucks for you, not for me. I sold them, I'm making money here, and that's it. I paid myself, I made some, I got some lunch money, you know? Or I can add that money into my portfolio and go buy more stock and kind of can see how that can compound over time. That's one of the really good benefits to selling covered calls. Now, again, you will need to have 100 shares of the underlying stock or an advanced options um, kind of limitation, right? So you don't want to have yourself limited to certain levels of options trading. You want to have more advanced options trading or have a lot of money in your portfolio in case, let's say, you were to actually have been executed if you're selling a covered call and you don't have the underlying stock. Now, the next thing I want to do is selling puts. Selling puts are a little bit different. So if I'm going to sell a put, this is something that I like to do on stocks that I would be more than happy to buy. So if I want to buy, or if I was interested in buying potentially 100 shares of a stock, what I could do is I could sell a put. And if that put expires in the money, well then I am required to buy 100 shares per contract that I sold, per, for, or per put that I sold. I am required now to buy 100 shares at the strike price. So let's say, okay, I like Ford. I like Ford's long-term hold, right? And I said to myself, well, you know what? I don't really want to buy Ford up here, but if Ford goes to 23 bucks, I'll buy it, okay? So what I could do, let's say I want to go out to like, I'll go out an extra week, right? And I think 23 bucks. I could get paid $25 right now. Let me get rid of the call here. I can get paid 25 bucks right now, credit of 25 bucks. If I was to essentially say, if Ford expires under 23 by the end of this ex expiration date, by the 14th, I will buy 100 shares. I'm also gonna get paid 25 bucks per contract right now to do that, okay? So that's one way you can also play it. So it also helps almost bring your average down. Let's say Ford goes below 23 and it expires there. Well, technically, you know, I got paid a few bucks to buy at 23, so my average is actually a little bit lower than 23. And my break even here is 22.75. So if Ford, let's say, closed the week or closed by the 14th at like 23.90, Technically, I'm still up on that trade because I bought at 23, but I got paid 25 bucks to do that. So that's one way you can also play things. And I think it's actually a really, you know, if you have enough uh, capital to buy 100 shares of any stock, I think it's actually a really good way to go about it. So get paid to buy it almost. It's like, I'm going to buy, I like it anyway at 23. Well, if you're going to pay me to do that, sure, I'll take it, right? So a lot of traders or advanced traders will do that because they're going to get paid to buy at a price that, hey, I'm, I'm, I like it anyway here, so... Sure. And that's one thing you can do. Now, the next thing I want to do is multi-leg orders. Now, on this channel, we have plenty of videos going over all the different Weeble options trading strategies. Now, Weeble, I believe, has it a lot easier, but 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 there actually are ways you can do it on Robinhood. So, for example, let's say I wanted to enter in a multi-leg option. What does that even mean? Let's say, <clears throat> I'm going to use the 14th expiration here. I wanted to buy the $25 calls. Okay, but I also was like, you know what? I don't know. Maybe Ford goes up a lot or maybe Ford goes down a lot. How do I play both sides? Well, you can. If you want to buy the $25 calls, I can do that. It's going to cost me 63 bucks. But let's say I also wanted to buy the $25 puts. I can buy those as well. So now if we look at our little chart here, what do we see? Well, now we're looking at something that's telling us that we could do this and we can get, we can make money if we get a big move down or a big move up. Now, if Ford kind of sits in between, we can, we're going to lose because it tells us now our max loss is 175, what we paid for the options, but our max profit is technically unlimited if Ford goes crazy up. So what we can do here is we can play both sides by buying puts and calls. And if we get a really big move in Ford this week or next week, then guess what? we're able to capitalize in either direction. The way you lose though is if Ford doesn't move very much and it'll tell us. Okay, so Ford's price needs to be either below 23.26 or it needs to be above 26.73. If it's above or below those levels, okay, then we make money. And if it's not, in between, we lose. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. So we could do that and we can enter in multi-leg option as well. If you want to learn more about how to do this, 
Weeble, I think, has a very easy way, or they do a lot of that for you. So check out our other videos and our playlist on options here on the channel. That should be a great place to go. But this is an example of a long straddle. We have plenty of videos coming to Iron Condors, Butterfly Strategies, all that stuff, which you can utilize and implement a lot of that here on Robinhood. But we explain that on Weeble. So that is how we trade options on the Robinhood platform. If you have questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Happy to answer those questions. Happy to talk more about that. This is the updated version. This is as we're filming this video, the latest stuff we have for you right here when it comes to Robinhood. Hope that was helpful. If you got something out of the video, consider subscribing. Thumbs up button. Check out our other videos, our other options playlists, and check out the options for beginners video if you want to learn more about options. That will be linked in the description box down below, as well as other links to other resources, free stocks, and all that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.